Tutorials Cosmic Corner, and let's get started. In today's video, we're going to show you how to install and use Gratsbird. Gratsbird is a background extraction utility tool. And when you're done with your stacking, this is where you're going to use the program. And let's get to it. So what we're going to do is go down to the bottom. Let's open up our browser. And on our window here, we're going to type in Gratsbird. And I will have a link provided uh, below so that you can just click on that link and get you to the page. So here, when we get the Gratsbird, and as you can see here, it's a fast and easy way to remove the gradients. This is a background extraction utility tool, and it works pretty good. So here, we're going to go to Windows, and it has several other platforms, as you can see. We're going to go to Windows because that's what I use, and then it automatically defaults to my downloads. You can put it to wherever you want. Just remember the path of where you put it. So we're going to hit save here. And as that downloads, it's going to show you that it's done. We're going to then traverse to that folder right here. And then at this point, you can move it if you want um, to other areas. If you have like a separate folder for your Astro programs, or you can just double click on it and start the installation. So here we're just going to double click on our in our case. And that's going to begin the installation. As you can see here, you can set your your uh, destination directory here. It automatically defaults to Gratsbert, automatically goes into your programs. Gratsbert, as you can see there. Uh, and again, if you wanted to, you can go into uh, areas to put it. So we're going to hit next here. And then it's going to start the installation. As you can see here, it's going to start registering all the stuff, copying the files, and it's going to start doing our installation to our program. And as it does the installation, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you're just going to download it, hit next, 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 until it's completed. All right, so here it finished. As you can see here, it completed the installation, and we're going to click Finish to exit. So now that it's installed, let's minimize these and get rid of those. It does not put, it doesn't look like it puts a shortcut. So what we're going to do is create one. So we're going to go Gretzberg here up at the top, and it should come up with that you installed it. And as you can see here, uh, Gretzberg uh, 3.0.2. And we can open that, we can run it. Um, we can pin it to our start, our taskbar. Um, what I'm going to do is open file location. And here, I am going to right click on that. And it's a shortcut. So I'm going to then go over here and I am going to go to show more, send to, and I'm going to say desktop shortcut, create desktop shortcut. If I close this out, now you can see here, we have a desktop shortcut. All right, so what we're gonna do here is just double click on Gratsbird 3.0.2 is our version, and then it's going to then open up. Now, once it opens up, you can see here, it's got the splash screen, and the layout is pretty much on the left. You have your numbering of your steps, one, two, three, four, five. Over on the right, we have a help section, an advanced section. Down below, we have our information for our image. First thing we need to do is load our image. So you're going to click on this button. And you can see you got plus signs, minus signs, takes you to each step. Okay. We're going to hit load image. And what we're picking right now is an image that I did in Cyril. So I stacked an image. And now I have my result. Just like any other program, when you stack your image, you have a final stacked image, then you need to process that image. So that's what we're going to do here. So I'm gonna click on my image. I'm gonna hit open. And when we open up our image, you can see it's in a linear state. Just like if you were opening it up in another program and you just stacked it, now you're going to go into it. It will open a linear state as well. But we want to see this. So down below, as you can see, it has 
some image information. So in our case, what I like to do is go down towards that, the stretching factor and use the little arrow there. You can see it has different ways in how you can stretch this. I usually go all the way to the 30% because what this is going to do is stretch our image. and It's going to give us a clearer picture on what type of artifacts we have. As you can see here, I have a little artifact here from either shifted or something moved. Um, but this is your normal artifacts that you would see after a stack. From here, what we're going to do is on the left-hand side, now that we loaded up our image, we're going to go to the next step. The next step is the crop. And then when I hit that plus sign for the cropping, you can see it drops a yellow box. Yellow box has two points, as you can see there with the circles. All you do here is click on each circle and just hold your mouse button down and then drag it to where you're past your artifacts. And that's what we want to do, right? We want to go past our artifacts. So I'll set that one and then I'll go to the bottom right one and do the same thing. We're going to stack. And again, this is your preference, but you want to get rid of those artifacts. Once you're happy with how you lay this out, we're then going to hit the word that says apply crop. It's in a crop. So you can see there, it applied my crop. And now that your cropping is completed, we're then going to go to the background extraction. So when the background extraction appears, right now we have different options on your interpolation method. If I click on this drop down, you can see you got different ways in how you can do that. And there's also an AI function. And that's really the whole reason why we're grabbing this, is that I want to show you really the AI steps because it makes everything easy. It does everything automatic. And you don't have to worry about doing all these things manually. But if you were to do it manually, over here you can see you just read each step. And it's got sample size selection, display your points. Here you got the rows. Uh, your grid tolerances and stuff like that. And so then if you hit create grid, for example, it's going to drop down an automatic grid on your deep space object here. You can see it's placed them where it thinks it's supposed to go. So that is one way that you can do it. Because right now this is the manual way. But if you didn't want to do the manual way, over to the right, under Advanced, if we scroll down in our Advanced section, you can see there's a Background Extraction AI Modeling. When we click on that dropdown, you can see there's been different versions. And you always want to click on the latest version as far as the number is concerned. Also, too, if you still wanted to do this manually, if we were to scroll up to the top, of our advanced settings. You can see we have the sample points, sample sizes, that's the sizes of the box, how, how big or small do I want them? A lot, a lot for example, I'm talking lower and higher. See that? You can go all the way to 50 if you wanted to, or you can go all the way down to, you know, like, you know, is it five? And I think the default here is 25, but I like, um, I like 20. And so you can see that it drops it down. And just like any other background extraction program, you don't want your points to settle on your deep space object or stars. You don't want them to be on stars as well. And then if we look over to our right, you got sampling colors. This is kind of nice. So you can see when I drag it, it has different colors and it just makes it more apparent depending on your screen and how you guys want it. But the default is 55, which is yellow, which is fine by me. Um, but that just gives you a little idea, though, of things that you can actually change if you're doing everything manually. But in our case, ta-da, we're going to do this through the AI. So here, if uh, and again, if you if you were happy with this and you had all your points 
and all, and everything like that set correctly, all you would do is calculate the background. But in our case, we want to use the AI feature. So over here, we're going to click the drop down and click AI. You can see here now all those uh, options went away. So then if I was to hit calculate background, it's going to pop up a box and it's going to say, hey, you didn't pick your extraction AI model. In. So it's, it wants you to select that. So if I clicked OK, over to the right, again, in case you had it closed, your advanced button right there, advanced, we're going to scroll down and we're going to pick an AI model. And as you can see here too, we got the denoise modeling uh, as well. So for us, we're going to hit the AI modeling 1.0.1. That's the one that we're going to download over here so that we could do this. So let's go back to RBF. Let's reset our sample points. Let's click on AI. Now that we have an AI feature modeling here selected, we're then just gonna hit the button that says calculate background. And when you first calculate the background, after you picked your extraction AI modeling, it's going to tell you that you need to download that option. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to download it since this is the first time that we've done it. And then you're just going to hit yes. That then is going to download your AI modeling program and put it within Graxberg. So as everything downloaded, it performed my background extraction. So you can see here the results. Looks pretty sweet. And if I was to click on the button up at the top here, look, check this out. You can go to your original, you can view your corrected, you can go to what was extracted. That's kind of nice. So let's go back to our gradient corrected. And now that we're done with the background extraction through the AI modeling, now you just go down to this, the next step, which is going to be the denoising. And just like the background extraction, if we were to click this, it's going to say that we do not have an AI modeling selected. So we need to do that. And again, that's going to be in your advanced section. So over to the right, we're going to go down to denoise AI modeling, and we're going to pick previous, the newest version of that 3.0.2 which happens to be the version of Bradsford, which is introduced to the denoising. You can see here, there was a couple of different iterations of denoise. And at this point, again, we're gonna hit denoise image once you're happy with everything that you selected. And again, it's like the background extraction, the very first time we do this, you have to download the AI modeling. This is gonna download, and then once it's done, it's going to perform the denoise. So in our case, it's going to download, download and stuff like that, and then we'll get back to you as soon as that. Once it's downloaded, now it's doing the denoising performance. And once that's completed, I will show you what that looks like. Okay, so you can see here, it just finished. And up at the top, we have new selections. So here's the original. This is with the gradient corrected, and then this is denoised. Once we do that, now you hit the plus sign again, and then you got options on how you want to save it. You can save it as a TIFF, you can save save it as a uh, you know processed, save the background, you can save the stress, the stretch and processed. So in our case, we want this to be um, back to a fit file, that's what we want. We want to save the process. So when we save the process here, you can see it renames that to a fit. And then it adds a little extension here to let you know that this one's been altered through Gratzberg. So that's what makes it nice. And then you just want to hit save. 
Now that you saved it, let's open up Serial. And what we're going to do here is open this up. And here is our file that we just created from Gratzberg. And we're going to click on that, hit open. And when you open that up, right now it's going to be in a linear state. But we're going to go to the drop down. We're going to hit auto stretch. And there you have it. So there is the auto stretch version of the horse head um, through Gratzberg. So you can see how good this actually did. And then if we hit open again and go to our beginning one, so it went from this without anything to this. So I hope you learned a little bit about how Gradsburg can help you out with your workflow and how it can take out the background extractions and make your uh, image very, very nice uh, so you can begin processing. So I hope you like this. Please like and subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one.